All right, here we go. Um, first things first, um, the virtual machine on the right is the Ubuntu 7 machine, which will be the machine that we'll be exploiting. And the machine on the left is our backtrack machine that we will scan the network with to find the Ubuntu machine and exploit. Um, so Ubuntu's target and our attack machine that we're using is uh, backtrack. So let's get started. Um, we'll take a look at our IP address here, make sure we're on the same um, scheme here. Um, 192.168.2.7, um, that is correct, um, because this is a lab, uh, the Ubuntu machine is somewhere on this uh, network. Uh, so what we're going to do is a uh, quick scan with Nmap, just to see what's all in the network. Um, and hopefully we can find this uh, Ubuntu machine on the network. So we'll go ahead and do that quick scan here. While well, that's going, I'm going to go ahead and load up my scanner, uh, my Nessus scanner. Um, that way uh, we can scan for vulnerabilities once we find the IP address of the target machine. So we'll go ahead and log in here. Alright, uh, we'll get this page ready. We'll go back and see if we found anything yet. Nothing quite yet. Um, I'll just show you. Okay, there we go. Um, we got a uh, charging computer. We got a few ports open. And we're showing that uh, 2.100 is the IP address of our uh, target. So we're going to go ahead and uh, we'll make a quick scan here. Just call you Ubuntu. Uh, and then um, just an internal network scan since we're on the same network. And then we'll just put in our IP address of our target computer that we just found. And go ahead and launch that scan. While that's loading, we're going to go ahead and load the Metasploit framework on MSF console. Let's the command to run to get that going. Um, while we're waiting for that, um, let's just see how our scan is doing in the background. It looks like we're running. Um, uh, so far, we've got one critical, one critical vulnerability. And um, <clears throat> we'll see if there's any more than that uh, while that's still going. Um, our MSF console is still getting ready to load. Um, for this demonstration, we're actually going to exploit the Samba um, remote buffer overflow. Um, so, fortunately for us, um, the vulnerability scanner found it. And we're going to get what's called the CVE number, um, which is the common vulnerabilities and uh, exposures. Um, which it just looks it up in a database, pretty much is what it does. So this is our number right here, CVE 2007 So that's our number. Uh, by now, our bench should be loaded. If not, it should be really close here, anyways. This is our number that we want. Okay, let's slow it away. I guess while we're waiting for that, um, refresh our scan. You can see that we got a couple more in here. Those are the ones that we need to uh, try exploring first because you know the mediums you're not going to have a whole lot of luck. So it's great to have uh, this critical uh, exploits on the top. You can see we have a Debian SSH, packet random number generator weakness, and unsupported Unix operating system weakness. Um, but like I said, we're going to be attacking the Samba request heat-based remote buffer overflow. Um, so we can go ahead and uh, we can shrink our Nessus here. And we'll see if our Metasploit looks like it's having a tough time trying to get loaded here. I'm going to go ahead and just load it into a different terminal here. Hopefully it'll come out quicker. So we can kill this guy. Let's 
keep this bad boy a load here. I'm just going to show you it here on the right hand side too. Um, we can't really get into this machine. Um, we don't know usernames and passwords. I mean we can try multiple things. We can try getting red access here but we just we just don't know any of the credentials. So now we have finally um, our mesh plate loaded. Usually it takes a little while but Unfortunately, it took a little bit longer than normal. We're going to go back and we're going to look at that uh, CVE number that uh, we found before. So remember the CVE 2012 or 2000, uh, 2007, 2007, 2446 number is what we need. So we'll go ahead and load that. And what we do is we actually search for that specific uh, common, like I said, common vulnerabilities and exposures. Uh, number, which is just a database of compiled vulnerabilities that, vulnerabilities that were found. So we'll let's first search for that and see if Minusploit finds anything. And if we're lucky, it'll find some modules. And there we go. We've got uh, about you know five modules here and one of them is a good ranking which is good and that's what we want to go for um, the exploit linux samba lsa trans names heap is the good ranking uh, module that we want to use so we're going to go ahead and we're going to use that module um, and that's the correct syntax right there so we'll go exploit linux uh, samba lsa trans names heap um, and now that we have that uh, that exploit there, we're actually going to show the different payloads that are available for this exploit. Um, so we'll go ahead and run that uh, syntax there. And actually, we found there's multiple payloads here. Um, but for this special attack, we're actually going to need to use the reverse TCP uh, payload uh, to gain the shell. So what we're going to do is we're going to set our payload to our Linux, and I'll actually show it to you here, it's this guy right here, Linux x86 shell reverse TCP. That's the one we want to use. Um, and our next step is we need to see the options of this payload. So we'll go ahead and show options. So what we need, and we can see we need, there's two required fields. We need a remote host, and we need a local host. Our remote host is our target computer, which is our Ubuntu system. Our local host is the backpack machine that we're on now. Um, so you'll remember that our remote host IP address was 192.168.2.100. So we're going to go ahead and, uh, I actually forgot to set here, but we need to set the our host at 192.168.2.100. And now it shows that our host is set to that. And now we're going to set our local host, which is our machine, which was our 192.168.2.7 address. And just one last time, let's check over all of our settings to make sure that we have everything correct here. Um, we've got both of those required fields and everything is filled out. Um, so now, um, the final thing to do here is just to go ahead and exploit the target. So we'll go ahead and exploit and run that. Um, it goes through its process and it shows, you know, just a blinking cursor there. Um, we're actually, um, as you can see here, the command shell session one open means that we're actually talking uh, to this Ubuntu machine through this port on that IP address. So we actually have access right now. So to prove that, we can just. Um, you know, if we run who am I, you know, it's going to show that we have root access. But if I actually run the ifconfig to see what IP address we have, we can see that we are running the 192.168.2.100. So we are accessing that Ubuntu machine. Um, the purpose of this exercise, too, is to find files, um, some bank account files on this Ubuntu uh, computer. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the file structure. So let's go to the root of the uh, Ubuntu machine here. And let's see what we got here. We have a bank account info file. And uh, so what we're going to do is, let's see if we can uh, 
just look at that file and see what we can find inside. So we'll go ahead and change our directory into that bank account info and see what we have. It looks like we have two files, accounts L1 and accounts L2. Um, you know, since we're here, we might as well just look at them. Um, so, cat accounts underscore L1. <laughs> we got the bank president's account number, which is 31337. And then uh, let's take a look at the other one while we're here. And there you go, the bank IT manager's account number, too.